All right, guys, welcome back to Comics, Cards, and Brew. I am, like, really stoked today to be back with my good friend Marvin Wynn. You guys know him as the writer, creator of The Edge, a very successful, very awesome, action-filled comic book that if you've not started reading, you know, wh wh what are you doing with your life right now? I mean, it's already too – the issues are getting deep. Come on. Like, you don't want to get too far behind. <laughs> I mean, Marvin, you're on issue like what? You've written, like, what, the first 60 issues, right? Uh, 80. <laughs> Hundred. Eight? Oh, 100. Whoa, slow the, <laughs> pump the brakes, dog. Pump the brakes. 800. Uh, so we're at, we're at 17. <laughs> you have 17 really all the way done? Yeah. Oh, man, I was just, I didn't realize you were that far. You, you've you got, so guys, if you remember, so I, Marvin and I have been on here a few times together, and we started right before his first issue debuted. And so now, Marvin, so from the time your first one came out, which was, mm -hmm. wasn't it back in March, right, I think? Yeah, back in March, yep. So from the time that first one debuted to now, kind of give us a rundown on how, how things have changed, if they've changed, kind of what your, what your model looks like now and where we're going from here. So, I mean, I, I think the model changed in that um, we've been encompassing more stuff into, into the world. So since, since we last talked, we debuted um, the design for the action figure. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine did a trailer uh, for the first four issues, which which went over really good. Um, it's getting hits on on YouTube. I take I take like my tablet to cons and I, I play it for people whenever they come to the table and things like that. Smart. And it's it's just the more more we're doing, the more we're trying to add. So we've got other stuff coming down the pipe that I can't talk about just yet. Uh, that's going to do some. And then I almost did it again. I was on another show the other day, and, and I almost I almost said it. I'm like, no, no, pull it back, pull it back. Oh man! So, um, oh, we do have a Kickstarter coming for uh, the first four issues, which is going to include, I believe, it's going to be the Adrenaline Rush story. So that's the story that takes place between issues four and five that we kind of started and stopped doing. I want to get it done because. It's one of those things where it's giving you a little bit more information. You don't have to read it. I would I would like people to, but it explains a single page um, as we get into the the end of issue five and why how this person got a hold of the edge. So we we got we got a a vial of the edge in play, and oh. it's 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 going to bounce around a few hands and then it's going to land into someone's hands that probably shouldn't have. <laughs> So we we we've, we've talked about these two characters, and I posted on Facebook about them. So, uh, and I always do hint hint. So we got Renard Edgerton, Edgerton. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he's he's a doctor, well, and we've got uh, Marcus Drake, who is the the guy who runs Drake Industries, and he's been trying to get uh, his hands on the edge since his dad first talked to about him about a, a few years back. So he wants to get it because he wants to commercialize it, of course. He wants to make money out of it. But, um, yeah, a lot of stuff happened. Um, like we, we talked about uh, giving Revenant his own one shot, which is going to deal with his past, his present, some of his future. But it's going to be all jumbled up because his mind is so jumbled. So it's not going to be played in order. So it might start at the end and then go to the, and go to the beginning and then to the middle. And then he might make up something. Then he might talk about something that may or may not happen because he's like talking to either his knife or one of his clones and he's lying to them. And, and maybe the clone is like, dude, what are you talking about? I was there. That didn't happen. What do you, why are you making up stuff? And Revenant's like, oh, it sounded cool. I mean, I don't care. Dude, let, let, oh my, there was so, like, that is insane the amount of stuff you've got going. And I mean, it's crazy how just in the past few months, how much this has really blossomed yeah. and, and grown from. I mean, it's crazy when, when you and I first met, we first started talking about it, you had these ideas of, of how you wanted to go. And now seeing these things fall into place, seeing these puzzle pieces be arranged for, from a reading standpoint, from, from a reader, that, that gets me like super thrilled. And to hear that you're doing a standalone with Revenant that's literally going to match his mindset because he's out there. And so if the, the yeah. book to match yeah. that from a writing standpoint, badass choice and i love it i think that's right. i think readers are going to get a huge kick out of that that is oh and, and i think i think the the best part of it i'm actually writing it out of order i'm not like oh going to write it in order and then and then take peach it apart and put it back together i'm writing it out of order just so i'm in his mindset of well this sounds like something he would do right now 
but let's put it at the end of the book and not right here where it's supposed to go. Oh, man. Now, and so when you write, when you do your normal issues, do you write it from like start to finish or do you jump around when you're writing those? Oh, no, I do it start to finish. So that, so for you as a writer, that's got to be, and I don't mean this in a bad way, that's got to be almost challenging and exciting mm -hmm. at the same time. Cause that's, if that's different from your normal process, that's got to be. Right, right. Well, it's challenging myself. And that's, that's really, I wanted, that's really why I wanted to do it like that. I wanted to feel jumbled. I wanted to feel jumbled not only for me as I'm doing it, but when someone was reading it, they're like, why is this happening here? Shouldn't this be here? And, that, and that's the one thing we're going to, we're trying to push forward is that this guy's mind is cracked and it's jacked up. And <laughs> I just want, I just want to emphasize that on the page that this is what's happening inside his mind. I will tell you what, I, I love hearing that because, and, and especially for us as writers that you can't get stagnant. You have to, when you find something that works, that's great to have your own, your style, the way you do books. But if you're not trying to challenge yourself or push yourself, then it just gets to where you kind of lose some of that, not the spark, but you lose that edge. If you uh -huh. get it, you lose a little <laughs> bit of that, you know, I would plug it in there. But right. you, I feel like if you don't challenge yourself, then I don't ever want my, and I don't, I know you can agree with this too. I don't ever want my writing to feel like it's um, just stale or I'm doing, here we yeah. go doing the same thing again and again. Right. So right. man, that's, because when I write my books, I, you know, I was just listening to Joanna Penn's podcast and she does one about writing and I'm very much the writer like you, I go start to finish. I've never mm -hmm. done one where I've written scenes out of order. I've always been a beginning to end person. So now that you said that, it makes me wonder how interesting and challenging it would be to write mm -hmm. a book with different scenes like that. I've never thought about, yeah. about doing that. Well, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like how you like those ensemble movies, like a public mm -hmm. fiction, something like that, where things aren't particularly happening um, in uh, traditional order or, or sequential order. It's, oh, I'm going here. Oh, I'm going there. Oh, now let's go back here and, and see yeah. where things lined up from there. Yeah, that's very honest. When you said that, when you, when you were first mentioning how the edge was, or how that Revenant story was going to jump around, mm -hmm. the first image I had was Pulp Fiction where Travolta gets killed, his character, but then yeah. he's back there in the end and you're like, oh. so it's, it, I, I, I think readers, when you release that, I have a feeling you're going to gain more readers because it's going to be one of those things where they're going to look forward. Go, well, I don't know what this guy's going to throw at me. I don't know what what Marvin's going to do in terms of writing. He can like literally, there, there. It's not going to be predictable, and I love that you're making it very unpredictable, very you know spontaneous with it. And I think that's going to be hugely beneficial to you. Right, and and that's why I like in the in the in the main book why I do origin is the way I do. I don't do an origin just do, oh, here's the secret origin of blank. It has to be part of the story. I want to go from the past to the present to the future and try to do that leap. So we did an issue two, we get, we showed a little bit of, of Bolt's background and then it immediately leads into the current, the current year scene. And that's what I'm going, I'm doing that for every character. It's going to be, we need to go back and look at what happened to this person before they became part of this team but it has to link up with what's going on currently in that story. I don't, I don't just want to do an origin and then we jump right back to the present. You're like, okay, that feels disjointed. Um, and it's always been a weird thing to me when they do that in comics where they do an origin story and then they jump right back and say, Oh, now we're here now. Like, wait a minute, those things didn't, there's no, there's no transition of seeing there. There's no, it's, it's, it's almost like the fade to black and now we're yeah. in season two. <laughs> no, you're right. Cause, and I feel like that's a common trap that, most writers when they're doing because I think that sometimes when when you're right when when writers doing comic books you feel that because it is a comic book you can do that but yeah. what I think what we tend but what everyone's got to remember is that when you're writing it from a reading standpoint we don't know what's going on through your head so if you jump like that it, it can take the reader out of the story then you're like well shit I gotta get back well what was the point of that if we're now going down the road and I don't know how it how it got there if you're doing it intentionally like what you're doing with Revenant that's different because you're planning it's right. meant to be that way Right. Now, I'll tell you what, the way you're talking about doing your origins and how it transitions to the present and the future, it, number one, I think it's something that other writers need to take note of. If they haven't started reading and seeing that, I, I wish other ones would. And I'm hoping that maybe you are going to be at the forefront of starting this trend because it, indie comic books, more so than I've ever seen, and we talked about this last time, but even since last time we talked, they mm -hmm. are steadily outperforming and doing and is much better than your standard standard comics i mean i had to i don't I, i'll tell you this this ties into it i had to drop penguin as a distributor because i was only having two to four pre-orders for marvel every week i'm like that's not even worth me keeping yeah. keeping them on and paying for extra stuff but then you look at my in my independence 
they were outperforming Marvel easily by 65 to 70 percent. I mean, in terms of my sales through the business. So it was your I hope that you are if they start training that way, just know that you are at the forefront of it, my friend. You were definitely one of the ones to start that. And kudos to you on that. Thank you. So, I mean, we, we, we've pitched to Lunar, like second side has pitched to Lunar. So oh. that's going to give an opportunity for more issue number ones. <laughs> people, oh. people love number ones and it, new covers. Yes. So uh, there's going to be a new cover for Lunar and there's going to be a, a new issue one cover for uh, the Kickstarter, which may also, because I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to do a box set too of the first four Ooh. issues. It's going to come in a custom box too. So uh, that's, that's coming soon. We're not... I've, I've talked about it, but I haven't, I haven't made any formal announcements because I haven't ordered the boxes yet. Okay. But um, as you say that, so what, what's happening for a mass perspective from with these books is that we took a hit uh, with the delay. So we got hit with a delay with issue two. We took a hit and hopefully this is going to help us re reaffirm that books are coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even though, even though we got hit with delays that the books are still coming and uh, that that should help us pick some sales back up. But that's why I want to do a Kickstarter. Is that that'll help me pick up my sales because I we I've done nine cons this year, and I've sold out at every con that I've been to, every book that I've got. Congratulations, dude! That's awesome. That's awesome. And we we started doing direct sales. So there's um, from stores have had it with the distributors. So they they've been contacting me to get those books directly which allows me to get those other covers into uh, stores also. So wait, I can buy mine directly from you? Yeah, if you want to, you can go direct. Well, the reason I want to do, so the reason is anytime, so I, this, you segued perfectly. See, look, this is why we work so well together. We're like peanut butter and jelly. Um, okay. One issue I want to talk about that I've been hit with too is the printing errors and all these delays because I've got people that will make, that they'll do pre-orders for books. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'll get an email from Diamond saying, oh, due to printing errors, these books are now put back or, you know, from, and it's not just one publisher, it's multiple. Yeah. I'm getting it from Boom, from, from everybody. So can kind of like, if we can dive into a little bit from your perspective, I know you talked about like sales being hit, but has it like with these delays and printing errors, what is, has that made you kind of have to slow down a little bit on the writing or does it just make you focus on different aspects of it? Like the marketing and things like that. Right. Well, with, with those delays, it, it, it did allow me to do marketing because as I since the way that Diamond does it, I was actually promoting issue three, four and five at the same time. Oh, and it's it's challenging at some times to promote something when one's not out. So I was promoting issues three and four before issue two even came out. Oh, gosh. And that's and, and it's a problem because spoilers. And I didn't want, I, I had to reformulate the way I, that I did my postings because I didn't want to post spoilers for issue two. And what ends up hap what ends up happening is that when you get a delay from issue one, to, well, we had a delay from issue one to issue two, then we had another delay. Pe I don't know if people lose confidence and they're like, oh, well, I'm not, this book's never coming out. So I'm just going to drop my order or I'm going to uh, drop it from my pull box. And I have to continuously tell people Hey, this is coming. It's done. I, the book is done. <laughs> it's just you just got to get into people's hands and into these stores. And what ended up happening was people started contacting me directly, saying, "Hey, do you have copies?" Uh, people are coming in and asking for the book. I can't get it. Can I get it from you? And I said, "Of course. Like as long as I have copies available, and I'm continuously having copies available uh, just for my own pools, where I can start shipping directly to stores." So. Uh, within, I would say December, January, I'll have the my site back up fully, and I'll be able to do bulk orders, which will then give you an automatic discount on orders. Nice. Well, so, well, that, so there's there is some, I guess, lighted light during that dark time because the the, mm -hmm. the delays. I mean, that that's huge because, like you said, how do you market something for a future book when the one before it hasn't taken place? Because, like you said, you've got to be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. Without giving stuff away, like, oh, I'm not going to buy two now. I just might as well go pick up three when it comes out. Right. Man. Right. And I, I've had that too, where someone said, hey, I'll wait until all the books are out because of the of the gaps. And I'm like, oh, oh my, that's not cool. No. <laughs> because <laughs> pre-orders are lifeblood. I mean, it's unfortunate that, that that's how it is. But I, I've watched like a few um, other stores on YouTube and their their complaints are is that we're not getting enough books. So yep. you're, you're, pre, you're, you're counting on pre-orders. But then they're saying if the book sells out, we can't get more copies. 
Yep. I know. I know. Image said they're not doing any more reprints. I mean, that's 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 going to hurt stores. Yeah. If they can't get extra copies, because now those books are now secondary market, and now they're fifteen dollars, and nobody, nobody's going to want to buy those books to read for fifteen dollars. Is that yours or mine? Is that me? I don't think it's me. Is it? What the heck is that? It's yours though, right? I, th I think so, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> he can, don't worry. Well, I'm, I'm just closing out of stuff and see what happens. See what it does. Oh Lord, he can, he can, and good thing he can, he can edit that out. Don't worry about it, guys. It's all fun. Um, is it yours? Yeah, just I, I think it, it's coming through my speakers, but I don't know where it's coming from. So I'm just closing windows. Okay, I'll do the same thing. It sounds like something's ringing. <laughs> like there's a call, right? Yeah, I'm noticing that too. I've closed. As you're doing that, I'll ask yourself, I'll go into my next, because he can always fade out the, the sounds yeah. as it goes. And one thing that I want to talk about from a writing perspective, like when I was doing my books, and even now that I'm getting back into my books, I didn't even think about all the delays that all these comic book things have had that from mm -hmm. my perspective, I may have the same delays when I release my next book. And I didn't even look at that to try to see if that was something that would happen. But I think that's something that anybody who's in this field has to consider. And for me, from a retail perspective, I'm glad you brought that up because I do try to order more books, especially for a hot book. And mm -hmm. I can't do that right now. They're too expensive. I can't branch into it. I'm, I'm limited with what I can order. And for me, I'm having to fade out as the retailer side because of that. And it's really unfortunate that I'm having, that I had to do that, but that's just one of those things that unfortunately takes place. Right. So, I mean, and then you, you've had these problems with the paper shortages. Let me be my. Do you what? I said, let me mute my mic and see if that's what it was. Okay, let's try it. Going. I don't know what that is. Um, but yeah, even with like, you've got these um, delays with from the printers now too, because of like paper shortages and things like that. So, I mean, those are things that um, were, were unexpected also. Now you, you're, just, you're just hitting, once one thing delays, it's like that that domino effect where it just keeps falling down over and over again. It is, it is. And, the, and the problem with the, this kind of effect is that it's not only hurting retailers, like you said, but it's actually hurting you guys as writers because you're like, you've got all your stuff ready to go and ready to publish and you're not able to move forward and market because it's affecting all aspects. It's, you're going to have to slow down on your writing. You've got to change the way you market completely. So it's really a challenge among all different ways for you. Like, I didn't think of it like that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and like you said that it's, it's not just affecting indies, it's, it's affecting everyone now. And like I saw a bunch of books get pushed out and delayed and they I mean, some of them may get canceled because because of that, because when you're dealing with like Marvel or DC, it could be part of a crossover of some kind and you can't release that one until the next one comes out. I didn't look at that from because that's and Marvel and DC. They rely heavily on crossovers because they do those big those big releases that tie in, like when you do Absolute Carnage or even the new Extreme Carnage, stuff like that. And right. even Marvel books, like everything that was coming in from, from different ones, it would say, hey, there's like my books today. I'm supposed to get new books today from UPS. I got mm -hmm. a phone call from Diamond saying, sorry, your books are delayed. It shows them in Georgia. I'm like, how does how does that help me when I'm supposed to do a sale tonight that my books are in Georgia? Like, what am I supposed to call, call Atlanta and say, hey, listen, can you Zoom me the books I've got coming in? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I had that issue uh, with a direct order, and I actually have to wait for new books to come in to get their order out. I had a package I shipped last month uh, to North Carolina. It, sh it showed up in North Carolina 20th and then just it vanished. Man, really? Yeah. And you still don't know and where, I, like, no clue where it went? No, no I, I did one of those um, find my pack, find my mail things. Yeah. And first they sent me an email saying, yeah, you, not enough information. Like, it's got a tracking number on it. What do you mean? <laughs> like, well, what's the color of the box? What's in the box? How much oh does it weigh? I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's nuts. And I, that was, it was on me because I didn't use priority, which I should have, which was you get free insurance. Now I have, I'm putting insurance on all my stuff now when I send it out because it could just vanish somewhere. It just, the box just disappears. It's like, it's like it's on its way to its next facility, to the next facility. Like how long does it take to get there? Yeah. And, and, and it's not like, and it's not just one shipping company right now. It's UPS, FedEx, USPS. They're all experiencing delays. And what scares me um, and what is kind of making me happy that I'm kind of fading out a bit to where like moving forward, like, like with your book, I put up for pre-order. I order extra of yours because I know you and I know I can get signed books from you. And I know that it's easy to sell your books because I know you and I, and I know how to, how to sell your books very easily. It's not hard at all to do that. But like, I can't take chances anymore 
on number one, random number ones because they may not come in. And with the holidays coming, if they're having delays now, can you imagine the potential for delays and downsides come to like November, December, and January? I mean, that's like, I don't know, with the holidays coming up, that's nerve wracking that they're already having delays now. And of course they all blame it on COVID. I mean, they're, they're using that as their, <laughs> which at this point I'm like, do you know how many people don't have jobs? Like hire more people, yeah. they'll gladly come in to work. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I, uh, I kind of magically just found out what's causing that error. Oh, you did? Yeah, there. Good. Oh, you're Great. awesome. <laughs> I had my volume turned down because it was. I was almost nodding my head to it, like diddling, diddling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's edited out, guys, and you can't hear it when this when this episode debuts, nor there was this weird like dinging, like a ringing of a phone, or trying to get our attention that was there. That <laughs> oh god, got, you got to love technology for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I wanted that I want to bring up to you too. Is that with these, you just said you went to nine cons this year, right? Yes. So kind of, can you kind of take walk us through what that looks like now? Like, like during a, a, the post when COVID first started, where they shut everything down because mm-hmm. you went to some pre COVID too, right? Uh, yeah. So I, the, our last con- convention was December, 2019. Okay. So you, so you did, so you were able to see it. So kind, kind of tell us how. How, how it's changed? Does it look different for you? Were there more people? Like you said, you sold out for stuff. So I know your sales were good, yeah. but I'm kind of curious. I know that the viewers are curious too. How, how have the con scene changed since COVID came around? I, I want to say that there was a lot of pent up people because oh, okay. it was pretty much normal oh. uh, for the most part. Um, you know, people were wearing masks, um, but our first convention was here in, in Pittsburgh. It's just called Still City Con. Okay. And it's one um, where you get a lot of celebrities at. So, you know, there's going to be, don't, don't come to my table without a mask um, and things like that. But that convention, it's a, it's a smaller convention. So it's really busy. So we, we are, we got lucky that our table is right by the bathroom. So oh. everyone has to, everyone at the convention has to come past us. Yes, <laughs> they get to the bathroom, so we're able to grab people. And then they're, they're, then you get the um, the the stop at the stop and go motion. So while someone's standing there and they're looking, and you're like, hey, come over, let's talk. Uh, we also did terrific con in Connecticut. Um, that was that was that was a good show. I mean, it was the same thing. It was very crowded. Uh, we did Three Rivers here. Uh, but this one, with the, the, the two we did here were outside. So they had them outside in the parking lot of New Dimension. We'll be back inside next year. That show was pretty, it was pretty, um, pretty good for being outside, even though um, both times we had it, it rained. But this time we had it, this in October, early in October. So it was rain and it was chilly. So I actually had to go into the, up to the plaza and buy a jacket because it was so cold. I only had, I only had a hoodie on and I had to buy a jacket because it was so cold. Uh, we all we went to West Virginia. We went to Altoona, PA. Um, uh, next weekend we are going to Akron for Akron Con. Okay. So we've been able we've been keeping busy with the conventions, and it doesn't seem like that it's, it's changed. Where pe- people want to get out, they want to spend money, they don't want to be in the house anymore. But everyone, most people are wearing masks, and I think we're only going to have if we do it a show for Thanksgiving where they're mandating. Um, vaccination cards oh they are yeah you know that, time is i want you you're going to tell me how that goes because i'm curious if that's going to affect the attendance on that or not it already has oh really people have already like people have already posted on their facebook page saying i will not be attending they, they've had people uh drop out oh, okay well i mean they, i guess that's that's to be expected i mean i i know you, you and i don't want to go into the, in the political stuff ever on here but i i would have guessed that that would would have been a yeah, this kind of this is in Massachusetts, so I mean they're going to oh. be pretty strict about, like especially when it's when it's going to be probably cold. That's yeah. true too, because yeah. see, and then like when you said you had to wear a jacket, I'm like, if you were down here in Florida and you do a con outside, you'll yeah. never hear somebody say I had to wear a jacket. It's more like yeah. I almost had to strip nude to sell my books because I was right. sweating so much. Right. So uh, next year I'll be down down in Orlando for Mega Con next year. You are. Yes. How crazy! I, okay, so here's the funny thing. I'm we might have to go up there in room together because I'm actually so. With my writing standpoint, I've actually told my editor actually wants me to go to cons next year mm-hmm. and get tables for my books because I've got like come January, I'll have all my rights back to all my books from Kindle yeah. Unlimited because I had all my books in one place because I, I wasn't like you. You you learned you're able one thing that you've got that I don't. And this is a compliment to you before I go off on a tangent. 
Hmm. You as a writer, you're able to rotate your hats very well. Every time I talk to you, you've got an understanding of the creative side and your understanding of the business and marketing side is hmm. just at the same level. Most people are really good in one and they struggle with the other one. And you're able to fire on all cylinders with both. And when I first started writing, I knew the creative side. I was pumping out books. I'd write a book. Hey, here, buy my book. Then I didn't do any marketing. I didn't understand the business. I went and wrote another book. Hey, here's another book. Buy it. And I didn't realize I have to engage with my readers, engage with my audience and build these relationships or no one's going to buy it. So now I'm going to have to go to these cons and he wants me to get one at Megacon. So we we may have to room up there together, get have tables next to each other or something. Are you, um, you plan on going Dragon Con next year too? That's the one in Atlanta, right? Yes. So I, well, one thing that I have to do, I, I'm creating a budget right now um, mm-hmm. that is going to be literally just for like cons and writing. And there's, there's different shows. So cons, I'm going to have to ask you, and this will be, read, viewers might like this too. Do you see authors there that write book books as well? Or is it mainly yes. just comic books? Yes, both. Oh, you do? Both. Okay. Then, mm-hmm. then yes, I would like to go to Dragon Con. I've, and here's the thing. I've never actually been to right. a comic con. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's a right. different experience. And I, I think that it's, it's one of those things where if you're a known guy, people are going to come to your table. If you're an unknown, you have to drag them over. <laughs> you have to say, hey, come on over, buddy. Let's, let's talk. And hey, look, I got a bowl of candy. Come have some. Yeah. So it's, it's, the, it's the continuous pitch over and over again of the okay. same phrasing, the same wording. So uh, my, my thing is what I told practice your pitch so okay. that you can say it in your sleep and you don't, you don't, run over your own words and then you give the person a chance to respond. But the one thing you always want to do is to pick up the product and put it in someone's hands. I will okay. find that if you put something in someone's hands, more than likely they're not going to put it down. They're going to feel obligated that, Oh, I'm touching this thing. Now I have to buy it. <laughs> oh man. I see. And that's the kind of stuff that I, I like I did. I did some shows. They had reading festivals. So back when I was in my writing, there's, there's some shows I would do. I would do reading festivals and things like that. So mm-hmm. I had a good pitch back then, but the difference was I, I would do good when I'm in those situations. Cause you can tell, I like to talk to people that's never bothered me. The mm-hmm. problem was I didn't understand how much I needed to do that on the social media side yeah. and through like emailing people, responding to their reviews, their queries, things like that. I didn't do any of that. So this time I'm taking my knowledge of the of business and applying mm-hmm. it directly to my writing. So the, since I've done that just in the last three weeks, three, four weeks, a huge, uh, huge difference in number one, my writing, but also my audience hugely engaged. Like it's just, and a lot of that I got from you because when I first interviewed you, I'm like, wait a minute, you're a writer, but you do your own marketing and you do all, I'm like, well, that was what my failure was when I, you know, when I first went into it. So it's, it's really cool to hear how, you know, when you go to those things unknown, there's things you have to do. And, and cause that's stuff that I'm going to have to learn. So it's awesome that I've got you that I can talk to, to try to feel like, Hey, Martin, what am I doing? That's good. What am I doing? That's not Right. I mean, but that's, and that's the thing about it is that engaging people and some, sometimes people are going to purchase something just because you you seem friendly or you seem, or they want to engage in your story more than the story you do. Cause you, I get a lot of that where it's like, Hey, I really, I really like what you, like I saw you, like some guy was like, I say, I saw you on so-and-so's channel. I want to buy your book because I, I like your story. I like what you, what you were saying. Like, I don't, I really didn't get to the part where you talked about the book itself. I just got to the part where you talked about yourself. And like, I want to buy your book now because just just the way just the way you engage and you seem like a friendly guy. Yeah, I mean, it's like what you and I said before: marketing and the way you go on, when you look at the business perspective of things, you're as much selling yourself as you are mm-hmm. your work. Because, like you said, there's times where if, if people if you come across as very you know like off putting and you're not friendly, they're not going to buy your stuff because they don't expect that in your work. Like it's not going to yeah. they're not there's no hook. Your your yeah. hook pretty much when you're pitching is you. You are the hook at that point. Right. And then people don't want to support people that don't don't seem like that they're very nice people because you eventually you want to meet that person at a con and you want to shake their hand. You don't be like, man, that guy. Yeah. yeah I don't want what's to shake his doing? hand. Of him. What's he what's he doing here? <laughs> I'm gonna jab my pen in his hand so he can't sign any more books. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's just golly, it's 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 insane the 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 way that you've done so much this year in terms of pushing how that many issues out and you've done all these cons and stuff. Do you, do you ever sleep is my question. Oh, uh, I get a couple hours here and there, I mean, but it's, it's funny that you say that we went to um, New York for big apple uh, back in, what's that? Was that April? And I was up for three days. Whoa. Yeah. 
because we, we went on a Greyhound and we got there like early in the morning and the, this, the, uh, the place wasn't open. So we hung out at Taco Bell and we went okay. to the hotel and then we did the show and then we got back on the bus and came back to Pittsburgh. And that was like over a three day period almost where I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I am i am not i have not slept. <laughs> so, oh and then I got home and I was all wired up from the show and I still didn't sleep. So I don't, I don't know when I, when I slept in, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's it like, I, um, I, I talk when I say people, I say, I nap, I do naps. I like power naps. Yeah. So I mean, I'll probably, I'll probably lay down at one. I get up at five or six and then I, I'll get a power nap in uh, later in the day. Man. Well, people are going to kill me if I don't ask this because I, I did, I was live on my page the other day and they were asking me the same question. So I'm going to ask it to you when you have, <clears throat> like when you're doing your writing, do you, when you're working, do you have like time designated every day where you're like, okay, from, you know, this time to this time is going to be writing from this time to this time I'm going to do marketing or is it kind of like kind of walk us through what your day looks like in terms of when you're sitting down to work? I honestly tried to schedule it before, but I, what I found was is that if I'm sitting here and I don't have an idea, then that's time wasted. So what I normally do is that I, I set a, I set a clock. So like the day job um, is until four thirty five o'clock. After five o'clock, it's my time to do whatever I feel like I need to do to do other things. So um, that gives me a good five extra five hours to do uh, my writing, do any marketing I need to do, respond to emails, uh, check and see what's going on on YouTube, see if anybody is, wants me to come on their shows and, and things like that. So and then I'm sending emails to stores. So I'm not only am I sending emails to stores about new stuff, I'm following up on old stuff that they have saying, hey, uh, how are you doing with this? Is this one doing better than the other one? And then you see, you, you've you got my email, my marketing emails where I send out yeah. a, a big, long email of information. And then I, I'm now I've started putting like trailers and um, and prints in there. And speaking of that, I got to get you your print out. Yeah, for, please. Uh, G5. Um, but I mean, that's coming. I'm, I'm doing more mailings tomorrow. So you're, you're in that group for tomorrow. But I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's something that you say, I want to, I want to schedule time and it never seems to work out because something always comes up whenever I try to schedule some time to do stuff. So I just give myself just the, the widest berth I can to fit things into that time instead of saying, oh, from this hour to this hour. It's like, all right, I got five hours. Get, get in there and do stuff. See, so yeah, that, that to me is reassuring because a lot, of, a lot of times I'll listen to, you know, and I think that if you're able to do this full time, I think you can arrange your schedule that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kudos to you if you can do that. But like you and me who have full time jobs, like if I'm yeah. on shift, I work 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. So when I'm done with that day, I'm 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 pretty toasted. I'm, pr I'm pretty done. Yeah. But like you said, even on my days off, there's things to do around the house or stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, I felt I, I'm the same way. I can't I try to schedule and say, OK, on my day off, I'm going to you know try to work during this time. But it's the same as what you do. If I'm sitting there at the computer and I'm trying to write and nothing's coming and I just sit there and stare at a blank screen, that doesn't do me any good. So if it's not coming quickly, I'll transition. I'll do the same thing, go on my Twitter, responding to people, going on Instagram, on you know my marketing stuff and working on that, my publishers, things like that. And it's been, uh, I, for me, I find it makes the days more refreshing and it's not like I don't get bored with it because every day is, is different. I'm doing something right. different with uh, you know different things. And, and I, do you hold yourself to word count ever when you're writing? Yes, yeah, I, I go. I go until the story runs out. See, I'm, so I had someone. I literally had someone tell me, "Well, when you're writing, you know, you should really set a, a a minimum word count." And I'm like, "Well, I feel like that's restricting in a couple ways because what if I hit that word count and the story's flowing? I'm not just going to shut it off and say, oh, okay, well, I'm done. Let me just go run off and take a bath.' Like, I, <laughs> to me, I'm, I'm like you. I'm gonna I'm gonna write until the muse." You know, leaves me. I feel like that happens. You, 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 you know when you're done. You kind of feel like right. when, you, when you've gotten into the stuff out. And I just don't want to. I don't like to limit myself, especially if I'm in that creative mode. Mm -hmm. I pretty much write until you know I feel like it's it's gotten enough done. And some days that's more than others. It just depends on how it's flowing. Right. And then and sometimes, like in I think at issue six, I actually went back and added two more pages because I, I there was there was something we want I wanted to do in those last two pages and it didn't fit anywhere else. Like, yeah, I'm sticking it. It's going to go right here. Cause it, it just, it just, it just flowed better in issue six than it did in one of the other issues. So we went back, rewrote the script, added those two pages. And then 
had uh, Mark uh, drawn those two pages, and then we got it. Into nice. The oh, see, I didn't, and see, that's one thing you get to do is because you've got 17 issues done, you're able to kind of, if you have a scene that can, you can kind of mismatch a little bit. If a scene doesn't fit in one issue, you know, you could tuck it in to mm -hmm. another one that fits better because your, your world building is very different. Yours is, is so vast. You've got so much going on. I don't know how you keep it all straight in your head, which will lead me to my final question because I know we're short that we're crunched on time today. Do you have like a, a running outline or a running file that you keep for the edge to keep your universe together like that way, or is it all in your head and you're just able to pour it out onto the page? Well, I mean, I, I, I've written sort of a Bible down, but when, okay. what ended up happening is, and I'll, I'll give this one away. So with mystic, um, when we first meet him, he is, we would consider him to be a knight. He's wearing, he's wearing armor. And what we do is, as the swords change, he changes. So coming up in issue six, we're going to dive into a little bit of his back, background and show the swords and give a little hint of other people held these swords in the past. And it's something because some sometime, some way it's going to possess him. Oh. So when the swords change, the way he presents himself is going to change. So oh, I love it. it goes from like a knight to more of a samurai type slash ninja type uh, <laughs> attire. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. And right now, so th there there was a pirate who held the sword. So we're trying to figure out how, how we show this guy as a pirate. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh, man, that's I'm glad to hear you say that, because I feel like if I was to write that kind of stuff, I don't think I could keep that all straight in my head. I'd have to have a, a running document of, of stuff, because otherwise if it, you might forget something or, you know, miswrite. And like I said that I, I, I note that down. But the funny thing about that is, is that. Mark was actually the one that we, we had already did the change in the costume, but there was no running theme for it. And we were talking about it and we had set it up and it was right there. And we, and we, and we decided to play on it because we, we never even thought about it before. It was oh. just something that came out of the blue. We were talking about something else. And I was like, so what if this, this, and this, and he goes, well, why don't we just do this? And I'm like, Holy crap. Why, why didn't we see this before? <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I mean, the, the, to me, I think that's part of the fun of writing is when you, you think it's like when you outline, because like, I, I don't know how you outline your stuff. But when I do mine, I do kind of story beats where I'll do like mm -hmm. chapter one, I'll do like a paragraph or two, chapter two, paragraph. And so in my head, I have an idea of how it's going to go. But there's times later where you're like, oh, wait a minute. And it changes. And you're like, oh, man, why didn't I see that when I was first looking at it? I think that makes it that's what makes it fun for us as writers, because there's times where it changes and moves in ways that we could not have predicted or could not have outlined ahead of time. All right. I mean, and, and then, like I said, that's the fun part is that oh, yeah. you can always you can always go back and say, hey, I meant to do that. Yeah. When you didn't. That's true. No. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, Marvin, when you and I talk, I swear we we could probably sit here for hours and do a huge yeah. episode, but that would just people would be like, okay, listen, you had to break it up. That could have been a four episode <laughs> thing. Yeah. But when we wrap up today, I, I want to end on one note. Your Kickstarter you mentioned, is that live yet? Or can you tell us when that's going to be able where people could I am hoping January, February, March. So first quarter of next year, we're going to do the Kickstarter. So the the thing that we're, we're going to have, we're going to do is that we're going to offer more than one cover for the trade, but it's going to be different to what's going to be available in stores. And the trade is also mm -hmm. going to have extra pages in the Kickstarter. And it's also going to give you your first opportunity to get it. Um, what I'm, I, it's, it's tentatively called Adrenaline Rush. It's been called Adrenaline Rush for a long time. This is actually a story that I've been wanting to tell since like the, the late to early late 90s early 2000s with a friend Whoa. of mine, john mytek and his his two characters sniper and rook uh we, yeah. we've been talking about doing this forever and, and now we're finally going to get a chance to do it. oh my god well i'll tell you what man that that's that's got to be exciting to have something you've been sitting on for decades and now mm -hmm. now you're able to that's awesome dude well let, let, like i said when that comes available let us know i'll post the link on here on the youtube channel and of course, share it on the page because I know that we all want to be a part of that. I definitely want to get my hands. I love that exclusive type of stuff. So I definitely yeah. want to get my hands on that stuff for sure. Right. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, I, like I said, that I'm making more exclusives available to stores. So um, whatever cover you want to make exclusives to you, if you want to do that, it's fine. Oh, now, yeah, they made, made my heart beat a little faster here. And that. I like <laughs> that. That's awesome. Well, Marvin, I, I'd say, man, thank you so much for coming on here again. Love having you as a guest on here. We always have such a good time. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, buddy. We'll see you next time. Guys, have a great okay. night.